My name is Tiffany Browley, and I'm a survivor of demonic possession, kidnap, rape, sex trafficking, and rejection. Growing up, I had been around five years old. I remember my mom neglecting me a lot and just beating on me. Most of the time for no reason, and I would fail in my classes, made better grades. I didn't understand much, and I didn't know why I would get beat on most of the time. She used to leave me and my sisters at home by ourselves, and we got into a lot of things, which is always just hiding up under the bed and climbing on top of the closet because I didn't want to be seen. I felt unloved. There was this one time I had failed one of my classes, and brought her phone on home and I tried to hide it, but she found it. And when she found out that I made an elf, she beat me really bad. I'm um, pitch me and beat me with a belt. Blood came out of my skin. And so I would cry and scratch my face. It didn't feel right, you know. I was like, something's not right. This isn't a normal whooping, you know. And I didn't understand why I would get beat about something that I didn't comprehend my schoolwork, you know, this that wasn't right. There was another time I was in the back seat. I remember my mother looking in the mirror and she said, Tiffany, you have a big nose and big lips. And I would be looking down and I'm like saying to myself, why does she just say this to me? I already got picked at at school. It felt like everyone was against me. My family, the kids at school, I even hated myself. So my mother met this guy and we moved in a trailer. I could tell right away he didn't like any of us, me or my sisters. And so I remember sitting on the couch in the living room and my mother and my stepdad walked through them the door and my mother went in the room. He had a com whole conversation about my underwear that my mother had watched. I saw him trying to figure out in my head, like, why is he talking about my underwear? I was like 12 years old at the time. So then I got sleepy, I had to go to school that next morning. I got up and I got ready to walk to my bedroom. And as I'm walking to my room, I felt him grab my waist and start walking me in my room. I laid down, I was confused. I put the coat over me and it was dark. He got on the floor and touched my bricks. He went up and down my body and I screamed in fear. I was confused. I was nervous. I, I, I just didn't know what to think. And so when I screamed, he ran out of the room and I don't know where he went, but I I took toll in the kitchen and used the phone to call one of my best friends. She was a foster kid, and I asked her, did she know anyone that could come get me? So she called around and made some phone calls, and a lady picked me up, and I went to her house. I stayed a couple of days. I stayed over there smoking and just talking and doing hair. I didn't even know how to do hair. I just do it. After that, I heard that my mother wanted me to come home, so I found a ride, and I went back home, and my mother said, where were you? And I said, I, I left because tried to mess with me and she said she asked him to come here and she brought him in a row with me she said did you try to mess with Tiffany and he said no look me in my eyes I didn't do it and I said well can I just go in my room of the house so she let me move in on her mother I felt rejected I know I felt like my mother chose a man over me and no I moved in with my grandmother she did the best she could of raising me she really didn't know how I ate I slept I was in and out the house but she didn't know too much about taking care of of me, but she did a pretty good job. And so around that time while I was staying with her, I was just moving in, in and out with everybody. And staying with her at the same time, just, just moving around consistently with everybody. My mind was just discombobulated. I was deluded or I was confused. I never moved back in with my mother. Like I said, I was just moving in with random people. I couldn't be still. I never could find a stable place to stay. I met my kids there and I ended up getting pregnant at the age of 15. And we had around one kid. So I had three girls and all. And it wasn't good staying with him. I would just have sexual intercourse with him to get my mind off of things. I really didn't like him like that. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I tried my neighbor. She was an old woman. I, I went over there and I asked her about the that was on her table. And it's the high felt. She described it to me. So I did it. And I did it a few more times. And then I didn't get a hold to it anymore. And so then somehow I, um, I just decided I wanted to go to job court. I moved in on campus with my kids. And then after that, I started dancing, doing house parties. And I remember some older guys, they recorded me. I was, that was my first time ever drinking. Getting, and, and so the guys were recording me as I was dancing. And I had heard that these guys was promoting about my video all of the town. And then I moved in with a girl and she was gay. I started messing with her and found out she was abusing my, one of my daughters. And so I tried to, I tried to hurt her. He tried to stab her some knife. And then I got locked up. Well, I remember my second child, I gave her away when she was six weeks old. And the reason why I did that was because when I was pregnant with her, I had postpartum depression really bad. And I didn't know what was going on, but I found out later on I was really depressed. 
And I couldn't handle two babies crying at the same time. So I gave one into my ex. I never could hold a job down, to be honest. Every time I had a job, I would quit it within like a week or a month. And so I didn't really bring it in in the income. I just always received food stamps and ten down. And so my kids, they was left in clothes. Even one of my daughters would have on jeans that couldn't even button up. And so I was just so, so depressed. Nobody would really help me financially. And I wasn't stable in the mind to take care of even myself. I moved back to the Albany at the age of 32. And I met this guy and we fell in love. Uh, we had a lot of the same qualities. We would party a lot. I even introduced him to sleep with women along with me and we got married. We would get together, throw parties. I just do a lot of wild out stuff. We was married six years, but together eight years. But then right after that, at the end of the relationship, I got back on and he kicked me out. After I got kicked out from my husband, uh, I became homeless and I moved around a whole lot. And how I made my money was sitting my body and stripping again. And somehow I ended up in Montgomery, Alabama. And I got in a car with a stranger and the guy six tracked me. And when he did this as I'm riding around with him, he was acting nice at first. Do you want this? Do you want that? And I was like, yeah. So then he went inside in the store. As soon as he got came back to the car, he said that I owe him. And I'm like, what? I owe you. And so he's like, yeah. So then he started acting real aggressive. But he threatened to kick me out as we ride on the highway. He told me to get out. Called me all kinds of degrading names as I got all my clothes and trash bags in the back seat. He even blasted heat to 100 and I was sweating and having panic attacks. And he did this around 10, 15 times and he never took me home and he forced me to have sex with him over and over again. This guy literally pulled out a gun to get ready to shoot me and everything. And he was like, I'm tired of driving. So we ended up going to a motel in Columbus, Georgia. And when we got in there, I was like, yes, this is my time to call for help or text somebody. So I ended up contacting my daughter and he caught me texting my daughter. And he grabbed the phone and he busted on the floor. And we tussled and I'm trying to get back out of the door. And somehow I ended up running through the door and told the people at the hotel, the owners, that I needed help. And the people was like, you you both are causing trouble. So both of y'all got to get out. And so I'm crying, I'm hysterical. And as I go get my, try to get my stuff, I look behind me and I look at my purse and he literally took my license and my money. I wasn't worried about the money. I just wanted my license. So I said, you got my money. You got my license. And he was like, no, I don't. And he drove away. So I'm left in Columbus stranded. My daughter, she came and got me. And at that moment when she came to get me, I didn't talk at all. I was mute. After I made it to my daughter's house, this is the part where I got on even more. So I got on feels really bad. And then all of a sudden, I started acting different. I, I started calling myself different names. It was Holly, Keisha, Hood Rich Sosa, Sosa Baby, Sosa County, Tiffany. I had a lot of men that I would call myself. And along with calling myself these names, I would act like a certain person. I wasn't trying to do it. It was just doing it like every 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden, I stopped doing all those I got tired of living like that. And then as soon as I stopped, my daughter came back in the home one day. She said, Mama, I need some help with the bills. And I told her I couldn't go back into the world anymore. And I went back. I said, I'm gonna do this one more time to help y'all out because I didn't want us to be on the street. And I went back and I prostituted to make quick money to help. And when I went back, things got worse. I literally became possessed with demons. So I would walk around the house and the yard growling and speaking in demonic tongues. I would hear voices on my head to tell me to kill people, kill myself. And, and I would see the devil often. And so a voice would talk to me and he would tell me that he got. So I'm talking, banging up to the, the spirit and I'm believing it. And later on, I found out that it wasn't God. It was a devil that was talking to me the whole time and his demons. So I started doing meditation, yoga, which is not God. But things got worse. I was to people tell me to throw salt around the house. And I did everything everybody was telling me to do. And that was making things worse. Even when I fornicated, things got worse to me. I ended up going to it now to get the demons casted out. And it was crazy. My body was literally spinning around above the floor as a lady was casting a demon out. What helped me in the process through all of this was find out who God really was. Because I grew up studying job Witness. I never knew who God was. I used to hear about Jesus and I didn't believe that he was God. But finally, I had to find out why I wouldn't be here today. Um, so I spent time reading scriptures, praying a lot, worshiping God, and doing a lot of fasting and praying and just seeking God's face. 
and I'm still healing to this day. With the PTSD that I was diagnosed with, yes, it came with the um, sex trafficking and everything that I've been through, the continuous trauma. But in, in reality, these are demons. And therefore, uh, we have to get deliverance in order to be free. And in order to be free, you have to give your life to Christ. I wrote a book called I Know the Devil's Secrets. And the reason why I chose this title is because I actually do. Because he definitely can deceive you. If you don't know God, he will treat you. He comes as an angel of light. My book is on Amazon right now. And I know a lot about the enemy. That's not where I wanted to go in life, but that's just what happened. My advice would be to never give up. When you reject me, that's not a bad thing at all. This is God protecting you. When you don't have any friends or anybody in your life, God is hiding you for a reason. Just know that if you're dealing with depression, um, suicide ideation, thoughts in your mind, visions, voices that no one else hear or see, you are, are literally seeing and hearing money realm. Well, if you go to a psychologist, they will tell you that you're crazy and other people will too, but you're not. This word is spiritual. The Lord says we'll fight not fight it against flesh and blood, but these are spirits that will battle. And there's a spirit behind everything that moves, whether it's a person or animal. And when you are seeing and hearing things that are so-called not there, you are either in the demonic realm or in something else. You can actually go into the demonic realm illegally, or you can cause it by doing the trauma can bring in evil spirits, many different ways. I realized something, because it's like I could hear God speak to me through the Holy Spirit. It's like when you hate to do something, like, oh, I hate doing this, more than likely that's the enemy trying to throw you off. Like, I hate writing. I hate I hate it reading. But now I'm starting to realize that my hands bless, they are gifted, and I'm supposed to be writing and reading, you know? So a lot of times, it's the enemy talking in our heads, putting negativity in our mind. And if we just listen to God's voice, we will never fail.